the most profound curse that has given me the most trouble. This is one verse I would like to skip again. Uh, amen. I know what you mean. Romans chapter, Brother Bill, if you would. Romans chapter 12, would you read starting in verse 9 and read down through verse 15, please, for me? Let love be without dissimulation. Harbor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessities of saints given to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. I have two ways to go this morning. The back page, I think, of your lesson, which is an expositional understanding of the text, as you've heard me say a dozen times, you need to learn what rejoicing means and you need to learn what weeping is. Rejoice with them that rejoice, weep with them that weep. Isn't that such a simple phrase? Isn't that a verse that's so simple and yet it's so profound? It is a simple command and yet, I'm asking myself, what did Paul mean when he said that? And how did he say it to mean what he said? And so I begin to ponder that and reading from several resources that helps me because we can be blind to the scriptures. My philosophy is I have never preached through all the Bible. I know what Romans says. I know what Revelation says. I know what 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2 says. I know what, I know what 1 Peter chapter 1 and 2 says. I don't have no clue what verse, chapter 3 says. I know what Luke 1 through 6 says. I have preached Matthew... I know I have preached John, I've preached Acts, I've preached 1 Corinthians, I've preached Ephesians, Philippians, and Ephesians. Uh, I know what they say, but I have not studied in detail the other chapters. I learn as I go. So when I come, even though I have preached, for, I have preached this before, obviously, years ago. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Here's the question. So then, preacher, tell me, how does this flesh out? So now, preacher, tell me, how does this flesh out? And I'm going to tell you this one. What is the standard of Christian living? What is the standard of Christian living? The standard... The standard of Christian living. How am I going to get across Jordan? Am I going to come up short of Jordan, Kevin? And my days are going to be prolonged. How am I going to enjoy being a Christian? How is the best way for me to enjoy being a Christian? Here is what this what we're talking about in these verses. What is 
what is our reaction to other people? What is going to be our reaction? What is our reaction? What is my reaction to others? We all face it. It's all part of our lives. What is our reaction to other people? To those who are either rejoicing or weeping. What is my reaction to those who are either rejoicing or weeping? I want you to notice something that Paul puts rejoicing before weeping. The question is, which is easier? We'll answer that in a few moments. Which is easier, to rejoice with somebody rejoicing or weep with somebody who's weeping? Maybe rejoicing is more difficult. Why is it more difficult? It is more natural to us to weep over sadness of others. We truly can get into feeling sorry and weeping and having sympathy with those who are going through great difficulty, especially if we're doing good ourselves. Some are so hard in spirit, though, that they can't even weep with others. They usually say he deserves what he gets. To a person who is weeping or crying, and there are a lot of reasons some get themselves into trouble and defeat as believers. It seems it is easier to cry than to rejoice. Cry with those who cry than to rejoice with them? Why is it so hard to rejoice and to be happy over someone else who is rejoicing themselves? You know why it is? You know why it is hard to rejoice when some, something good happens to somebody else? When something good, I could tell you several things that if I was to tell you, I almost did it this morning, but my wife said not to do it. <laughs> it could appear to be bragging, it could be appear to be, what's the other, bragging or boasting or pride as an illustration that you couldn't rejoice with me. You're saying, what is a preacher doing that for? You know, the reason that we have trouble to rejoice over somebody else's good is called this little word right here. Self. So, all of us struggle with it. Everyone has the same problem. Self. The problem of pride. Self always looks out for self. Amen. Self always looks out for self. Self wants to be considered great and important. And all of us have this problem. When someone, when something good happens, we rejoice. When others find out something they get that we want, we get jealous. And that's the flesh. I could give you the illustration when I was driving to get the mail and I went up that street and I saw that church building a new church. 
<laughs> right? Yeah, amen. Instead of rejoicing with that church, this is before I read this verse, so I had to go back and repent. <laughs> All the worst comes out in us. Amen. Right? Amen. Unfortunately. It's not natural to rejoice with those who rejoice. Just examine yourself and your experiences. It's much easier to pity someone than to be happy over success. When someone fails, has failures, or is down, then they are on our level. Pride rises up in self. We are not weeping. They are ha ha ha. We can rejoice because we're not weeping. They are so we can weep with them because we're not weeping. <coughs> so Paul's challenge is with what is more difficult. We rejoice and weep for the right reasons. We rejoice and weep over the right reasons. If someone comes up to you and says, I just robbed a bank and got away with it, you don't rejoice with them. If you, if you are weeping with a person because they got shot three times because they were found doing something wrong, you don't weep over them. You weep and rejoice over the right things. Some people have faced rejoicement rejoice but scheming behind it they appear to be rejoicing they appear to be weeping but you need to be careful why it's very exception it is a very ex it is a very exceptional man who gen genuinely genuinely there's a bird in his house genuinely rejoices at another person's rejoicing. Now follow me. I have, I'm on page two. It is very difficult to rejoice genuinely at the success of others. The greatest problem that all that we have is jealousy and envy. To the natural man, it is about impossible to the natural man, it is not high, almost impossible not to be jealous or to envious. People can get to the stage of showing or not showing their envy. You can look at a person who is just one the, the that house thing and you get $5,000 a week for life yeah. and you can show outwardly that you are rejoicing with them that's not what Paul's talking about but can I, can I say there is a real difference between not showing it and feeling it there's a great difference between not showing and feeling it. 